In the first years of the web, the loudest thing in the room was silence. A beige tower under a desk in Urbana Champagne hummed, a fan blade clipped a cable, and packets began a habit that would outlive fashions, fortunes, and founders. The program listening on that machine did something almost mystical for its time. It took a line of text from a distant browser, understood what was being asked, and sent back a page. A request, a response, a rhythm. That program would give rise to Apache, the web server that quietly powered the early internet and then kept powering it even as the stories drifted elsewhere. Apache is the software that sits on a computer, waits on ports like 80 and 443, speaks hypertext transfer protocol, and serves files or forwards requests to other applications. It is used by universities and ministries, blogs and banks, newspapers and nations. It is the traffic cop, the maitre d', the stagehand, and often the scapegoat, depending on the night. The lineage begins with N C S A H T T P D, written at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications at the University of Illinois by a young developer named Rob McCool in the early 1990s. When McCool left NCSA, development slowed. Around that moment in early 1995, a loose network of webmasters began exchanging fixes for NCSA's server. Patches multiplied. Someone made a joke that the software was Apache Server, and the name stuck with a wink and a double meaning. What formed next was the Apache Group, a small core that coalesced into a community. And by 1999, that community formalized into the Apache Software Foundation, a home for the server, and eventually for hundreds of other open projects. The server's own site remembers those beginnings plainly, and you can still read how the patched NCSA daemon became a common distribution under the Apache banner. Apache is not a toy and never was. It was engineered to be modular and methodical. At its heart lies the request handling engine and a gallery of modules that add abilities the way a Swiss army knife adds blades. The dynamic shared object mechanism provided by the mod so module lets you load or unload capabilities like SSL, URL rewriting, reverse proxying, and language bridges without recompiling the core. That was a quiet revolution of the late 1990s that made web servers more like operating systems for HTTP. It is why a single binary can be taught at runtime to speak new dialects and serve new kinds of programs. For the non-specialist, think of Apache as the concierge in a grand hotel. Guests show up asking for a room called slash articles slash history of encryption. The concierge checks the ledger, finds the room, and hands over the key. When the request is more complicated, the concierge calls the kitchen or the laundry or a neighboring building through a private hallway. That private hallway is the proxy and Apache's reverse proxy toolkit, anchored by mod proxy, makes it a gateway that can stand in front of Python applications via mod WSGI, Java application servers via the AJP connector and mod.jk, and entire pools of services balanced behind it. The result is that Apache does not just host pages, it orchestrates traffic between microservices, caches, and backends, wearing a calm face to the public while the staff works behind the scenes. The technology earned its place by solving worldly problems. Name-based virtual hosts allowed many sites to share one internet protocol address, a minor miracle when addresses were scarce and budgets were thin. Persistent connections, the humble keep alive directive, turned choppy request bursts into smoother conversations, speeding up pages without new hardware. These small graces, multiplied across thousands of machines, made shared hosting economical and kept whole industries within reach of small businesses. If you have ever rented an inexpensive cPanel account to launch a store or a portfolio, Apache was the quiet tenant doing the heavy lifting beneath that control panel. Who used it? In the early web, almost everyone. Netcraft's landmark surveys tracked Apache as the dominant web server for many years, cresting far above its rivals and defining the look and feel of the commercial web. Even as the landscape diversified and event-driven servers, such as Nginx, gained ground, Apache remained one of the big two through the 2010s and into the 2020s. 
The reason was less fashion than reliability. Administrators trusted its modules, its logs, its permissions model, and its community. That long, flat hum behind the world's page loads was Apache's calling card. There are names behind the hum. Brian Behlendorf helped coordinate the early project. Jim Jagielski stewarded releases for years. Roy T. Fielding brought rigorous architecture to the way the web itself should be shaped co-authoring the HTTP 1.1 standard and introducing representational state transfer in a doctoral dissertation that still guides how web services are built. Apache did not merely serve the web. Its developers helped describe the web's anatomy and teach everyone how to use it without tearing ligaments. The scale of the impact is easier to feel than to count. Wikimedia's cluster uses Apache HTTP server behind its caching tiers, a testament to the software's role in keeping the lights on for one of the most visited knowledge projects on Earth. Oracle's commercial Oracle HTTP server and IBM's IBM HTTP server are both built on Apache, a reminder that even corporate middleware often stands on community code and the patient cadence of volunteer stewards. And the shared hosting universe, from small resellers to giants, has long shipped Apache by default, turning one free program into the floorboards of a multi-billion dollar service economy. When GoDaddy reports billions of dollars in annual revenue, you can safely infer that a non-trivial slice of that empire is presented to the world by Apache under cPanel and similar stacks. The money flows to the hosts, the integrators, and the platforms. The applause, if any, lands on an email list somewhere in the Foundation's archives. How much money has been made because Apache exists is not a tidy ledger line, but some numbers sketch the silhouette. The Apache Software Foundation itself reported revenue of roughly $2.5 million in a recent fiscal year, mostly sponsorships and donations that keep build servers, security coordination, and legal protections in order. Meanwhile, platform companies commercialized Apache in their own ways. SpringSource acquired Covalent Technologies, an early firm selling enterprise Apache support and expertise, and was itself acquired by VMware for around $420 million, a chain of deals that captured the value of support, stewardship, and packaging around open code. The hosting industry's leaders report billions per year, much of it on stacks where Apache is the default front door. The architecture is free as speech, the fortunes are not. Legal controversy arrived from several directions. One strand began with names. In the 2020s, the nonprofit Natives in Tech asked the foundation to change the Apache name, arguing that a pun layered with a reference to the Apache peoples perpetuated stereotypes. The foundation responded by pointing to its historical rationale and community practices, but the conversation forced a public reckoning with branding, homage, and harm in open source. Another strand was licensing and standards politics. The foundation's confrontation with Sun and later Oracle over the technology compatibility kit for Java culminated in Apache resigning from the Java community process in 2010, a public split over whether an open implementation could be certified without restrictive field of use terms. Apache is more than a web server. It is also a polity and polities collect disputes. Financial controversy tended to be softer, a question of influence and direction. When vendors build products atop Apache or ship Apache under a commercial badge, where should the money flow? And how much say should sponsors have in roadmaps? The foundation's governance answers that with a stubborn phrase, community over code, meaning merit measured by contribution rather than check size. In practice, that culture has let billion-dollar companies package Apache while the upstream keeps its own counsel. The result is a delicate equilibrium that creates both friction and resilience. Politics, in the sense of geopolitics, brushed Apache's world in a harsher way. In 2017, Equifax suffered a catastrophic breach. Attackers exploited a critical bug in Apache Struts, a different project under the foundation's umbrella, not the web server itself. The United States Department of Justice later indicted members of China's People's Liberation Army for the attack. The lesson was grim and familiar. Software is infrastructure, and infrastructure becomes a battlefield. 
Apache's security teams issued patches, hosters scrambled, regulators scolded, and the public learned again that unpatched systems do not care about explanations. The brand Apache took heat that rightly belonged to slow patching and poor segmentation, yet the episode showed how a foundation's reputation can be singed by the proximity of its projects. Technical controversy kept a steadier rhythm. As the web's concurrency demand spiked, engineers argued over models. Apache's pre-fork multiprocessing module isolates requests in single-threaded worker processes, a comfort when libraries were not thread-safe. The worker and event MPMs introduced threads and more efficient handling of persistent connections. Advocates of event-driven servers argued that the future belonged to designs that could park thousands of idle connections with less memory overhead. Apache adapted, adding the event MPM and thriving as a reverse proxy in front of application servers, while Nginx carved out share on simpler static and proxy workloads. The truth was boring to partisans and useful to practitioners. Use the right tool for the shape of your traffic, and Apache is still the right tool in an astonishing range of shapes. To open the hood is to find a living museum of web architecture. Virtual hosts let one machine pretend to be hundreds. Mass virtual hosting lets it pretend to be thousands. Keep alive, keep sockets warm, so pages assemble without the stutter of new connections. Reverse proxy and load balancing let a farm of application servers look like a single civil servant at the front desk. The bridges are many and precise. Mod WSGI binds Python's WSGI world to HTTP. Mod JK and Mod Proxy AJP speak the AJP dialect to Tomcat, keeping Java stacks tidy. Mod SL wraps it all in transport layer security. None of this is fashion. It is plumbing that grew careful hands in small rituals over decades. There are facts that rarely make brochures and yet explain entire businesses. Oracle's own documentation says its Oracle HTTP server is Apache under the hood, giving customers a supported path without asking them to change the habits of their administrators. IBM's middleware stack does the same. Wikimedia's operations notes show Apache still carrying traffic behind caches and fronting application pools across continents. And while the foundation counts revenue in the low millions of dollars, the hosters who present Apache to the world count revenue in the billions. Apache is the stone in the builder's hand that others sell as marble. If you learn only one technical detail, learn the shape of Apache's modules. The D in DSO means you can treat web serving as a collection of verbs you decide to know. Load a module to rewrite URLs into clean shapes that search engines favor. Load another to authenticate users against corporate directories. Load another to cache, to compress, to proxy, to speak HTTP2. The old cliche that Apache can be anything is imprecise. It is truer to say that Apache can learn and that its teachers are you and everyone who came before you with a patch and a patient explanation. And if you learn only one economic detail, learn this. Free software can be the most valuable thing in the room without any money attached to its name. The foundation that shelters Apache raises a few million dollars to keep the lights on and the lawyers paid. The companies built atop it, around it, and behind it have raised and earned sums that require commas and cautious voices. When VMware paid roughly $420 million for Spring Source, it was not buying Apache itself, it was buying the human expertise that helps other humans use Apache well. When GoDaddy reports billions in revenue, it is not paying the server, but profiting from its reliability. The web's front door is free, the doorman business is not. The broader impact lives off the spec sheets and into the world. Apache made it normal for a small idea to be reachable by a large public at trivial marginal cost. That changed careers, neighborhoods, and entire economies. It also added to the load on the planet. Data centers now consume a notable share of global electricity. Efficiency features such as event-driven processing and reverse proxy caching are not just about speed. They are also about watts. Shaving a few milliseconds and a few kilobytes at the scale of billions of requests is an environmental policy, even if it is written in configuration files rather than law. So the untold story of Apache is not that it once won the web server wars, nor that it later shared the podium. 
The untold story is the personality it stamped onto the craft of serving the web. It taught a generation to read their logs, to respect permissions, to think about resources as flows, to separate what the public sees from what the systems do. It showed how volunteer governance can outlast companies and how boring software can be the kind that changes the most lives. Its great trick, perfected over decades, is to let other people stand in the spotlight. It has always been the doorman, the concierge, the stagehand. And when the curtain opens and the lights come up, Apache is there, breathing evenly, ready for the next request. Even now, down the hallways of finance and government and media, the requests keep arriving. A volunteer in Europe reviews a patch. A documentation page is updated to explain why a directive should be turned on. A university lab adds a mirror. A nonprofit files a talk proposal. A systems administrator at a newspaper restarts a service and hears that familiar silence. The show goes on, thanks to the kind of software that does not need to be seen to be believed.